everybody. Uh, Pastor Jeremy here. This is our podcast. So glad that you joined us today. Um, just a lot of great things happening. Um, we've had a great year so far. Um, the rest of this year, we've, we've got some great things on the docket. Uh, we've got a Holy Ghost meeting coming up. That's uh, September 29th um, at 6 p.m. You want to make sure that you're part of that. All of those meetings have really, really been a blessing. Lately, we've been seeing an increase of uh, just miracles and signs and wonders, people being healed. I mean, just really cool testimonies of people's physical bodies being changed and healed instantly. That's what you can expect when you come to these meetings is a move of the Spirit and the gifts of the Spirit to be in operation. So come be a part of that. We got our, uh, we got our Holy Ghost meetings our outpour Oklahoma coming up. That's in October. That's going to be the last week of October. Information's on the screen for that too as well. Uh, you might be watching this in the Oklahoma area or the Texas area, surrounding areas. We've already got people reaching out from those areas saying, I wanna be a part of those meetings. That's gonna be the last week of October. We're gonna have morning meetings, evening meetings. Uh, we've got our team going out there. We've got our worship minister, Marquise Kidd. He's going out with us. We're really, really anticipating a great move of God. So be a part of that. Um, just on a personal note, you know, our life's changing. We got two new additions to our family. Got two granddaughters coming. We got Harley Rose and Kennedy Grace Swizek coming into the family. So it's going to be a big, just a, a blast into 2025 really cool things happening for 2025. We've got more meetings that are scheduling for the road. What a great opportunity, you know, for for even people at the church to be a part of the outreach to the world, to the nations. We've got two meetings booked in Mexico for 2025 that we're really, really excited about and possibly a third. And Canada's booking up for 2025 right now. And so it's, it's really cool to see how God is uh, just opening doors of utterance and doors of favor all over. I'm excited about what God's doing. And it always starts with the seed of the Word of God. Always starts with that. And the Word of God is so powerful, it can really form in you the correct image of how God sees you. You know, it's important how you see yourself. The Bible says, as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. Um, the way you think is the way you believe. The way you believe is the way you talk. And what you say will be what you have. And it will determine the destinies in your life. So we want our words to be what we believe. And we want what we believe to be originated from the Word of God. Faith comes by hearing, hearing from the Word of God. What the Word does is it produces an image that is found in every promise of God's word. Um, that's why Paul, he said in Ephesians chapter 1, over there in verse 18, prior to that he says, I'm praying for the church, that they'd have a spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of him, know what the hope of his calling is, and that their eyes would be, the eyes of their understanding would be flooded with light. You know, when revelation knowledge is flowing into your heart, light shows up. The Bible says the entrance of the word giveth or it brings light. And when light shows up, God gives you a picture. God gives you an image of what's in that promise. An example of that is, you know, the Bible says by his stripes, you are healed and we have been healed or we were healed. The image of that healing gets down on the inside of you when the Holy Ghost shines light, the light of revelation in your spirit and illumination. Another translation of there in verse 18 says that our imagination is illuminated with light. God wants his images to be illuminated on your imagination so you begin to see yourself a certain way. Genesis chapter 11 talks about how the whole earth was of one language and of one sound, and they all seen the same thing. What they seen was a tower that was going to be built up into heaven. They had this image on the inside of them, almost like they had blueprints. They had plans to build a tower. We know 
uh, that it's called the Tower of Babel. Their plan was to build this tower from earth so it would exalt and be extended into heaven. And uh, they had all the blueprints for it. In fact, they had brick, they had mortar, they had all of the ingredients, the construction ingredients to build the tower. They hadn't started yet. Actually, they just started the preliminary stages of it. But what's interesting in that scripture in Genesis chapter 11, it says that God came down. Ever want God to come down? It's like, I want to find out how can I get God to come down and visit me? God came down for a visit. You know what he came down to do? He came down to see the tower. And, and the way the King James puts it is he came down to see the tower that the children of men built past tense. In other words, in the natural, it wasn't fully erected yet. They began to build it, but it wasn't, it, it wasn't completed. But God came down to see the tower that was completed on the inside of them because the scripture tells us that there's nothing that would have been restrained from them from what they had imagined to do. See, image is everything. Your imagination is such a powerful tool. And when you get the images of God's promise on the inside of you, you begin to see because of illumination, because of revelation, you begin to see what God says about you. And the image of this tower was already built on the inside of them. It was so strong on the inside of them that God actually came down from heaven to visit them. And the thing was, is it wasn't the will of God to build a tower from earth to heaven. The, the way to get to heaven is Jesus. That was always God's blueprint. Man always has a way uh, that seems right. Religion always has a way to try to attain or get to the heavenly promises or get to the glory. But the only way to get to there is through the finished work of the cross. Whole nother message. That's good. But understand this. They built that tower on the inside of them. They seen it complete. But God came down to see what was already built. And the scripture tells us after that, that they hadn't really begun. They just started the pre preliminary stages of building the building. They had brick, they had slime for mortar, but they hadn't completed the project in the natural, but it was completed on the inside of them. They seen it complete. You see, you can't complete something on the outside till it's completed on the inside. Y you... If, if you don't have a vision on the inside, you're not going to go very far in life on the outside. God wants you to see on the inside who he's already made you. That way, your confession of faith will now be powerful. I'm not talking about a confession unto faith. That's different. You can confess unto faith, but there is a confession of faith that is so powerful when it comes from an illuminated spirit that sees the promises and knows the promises. And that's what happens through meditation. You see, God spoke to Joshua and he told Joshua, be strong, be of good courage. Don't look to the left in Joshua chapter one. Don't look to the right. Wherever the soles of your feet tread upon, it's yours. But this is what I want you to do, he said. I want you to meditate on my word, meditate on the law day and night. There's something about meditation, and I really believe it's a missing element today in the body of Christ. It's something that a lot of people really don't do. That They're good at hearing the word and getting information, but we got to go beyond just having information in our mind to where we have illumination. And there's something about meditation that allows the Holy Spirit to take the paintbrush of the word of God and paint on your canvas, on your spirit, the image of the promise. And when you meditate the word, you're meditating the word. What happens is you're getting in the word, the word's getting in you. It becomes so alive on the inside of you. And sometimes that comes through the confession unto faith, muttering, murmuring, speaking the word, saying the same thing over and over and over and with your tongue, which is a pen of a ready writer, the Bible says. The tongue is like the pen of a ready writer. You're inscribing on the tablets of your heart the promises of God. That, that's one way that you can meditate. 
because he tells Joshua, don't let the word depart from your mouth. And then, then to, to take that word and begin to do it. With that comes mind renewal. And with that comes an image that becomes established on the inside of you. You see, a lot of people's confession of faith, not confession unto faith, but their confession of faith is really weak because they really don't see what they're saying. That's why it's interesting. We'll go back here to Genesis 11. It's interesting that when God seen that this thing that they imagined to do was so alive on the inside of them, the next thing God had to do was come down and confuse their language. Why? Because if they kept saying the same thing, their confession, now that they've already built it on the inside of them, their confession was going to make what they seen in them a reality on the outside. <laughs> See what I'm saying? And that's why it's important that if you want to change your confession, you got to change what you're looking at. And if you want to change what you believe, you got to change what, what you're hearing. And if you're hearing the word of God, those those pictures of those truths become images on the inside of you. And the Holy Spirit does his job of painting on the canvas of your heart those truths so that it's so alive on the inside of you. You can't go places that you can't see. God wants you to see the promises. He wants you to see the truth. He wants you to see that you're healed. He wants you to see that you're righteous. You, you know, a lot of people have a very poor self-image, which produces self-esteem issues. People have poor self-esteem because they see themselves uh, contrary to the way God sees you. The way God sees you is, is a complete and uh, righteous individual in Christ. God sees us in Christ. God wants you to see yourself the same way. The scripture says, if any man be in Christ, he is therefore a new creature. Old things are passed away. All things have become new. What we see today is really an attack on the identity of mankind. You, you, you see that. There's, there's uh, image issues. People are so self-conscious and they're so self-aware and uh, because of that, they've become weaker, especially people in the body of Christ. They've be, the, the more self-conscious you are, the weaker you'll become because you in yourself can do nothing, but in Christ you can do all things. You in yourself are nothing, but in Christ you are somebody. You understand this, the way God intended you to always be. He created Christ that way through his death, burial, and resurrection. And then he put you in Christ so you can share in that perfect identity. And that's how he made you. See, the Bible tells us in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21, he, he who knew no sin was made sin so that we might be made the righteousness of God in Christ. You, you'll never, through your own performance, be able to make yourself into the person that you think you want to be. God made you into who he wanted you to be by making Christ that way first. Amen. By making Jesus that way first. So Jesus is uh, the one who died for us, who was buried and rose from the dead and became the first fruits of many. And then God put us in him. And now we share in that same identity. And because of that, see, the devil wants to pull you away from uh knowing who you are in Christ. He wants to pull you away from that identity. One of the biggest weapons he has that he's using today is the weapon of stupidity. <laughs> it's the truth. If he can, he'll, he'll try to keep you stupid or keep you blind or misinformed as to who God's already made you. He'll get you to second guess certain things in your life. That's why it's important that you're established in knowing who you are in Christ, that you know that you're the righteousness of God in Christ. That, that's really important. That, that you, you know that you know that you know that your righteousness is in Him. It's found in Him. You're not righteous based on your own works or your own performance, but it's established in His finished work. And because of that, you're qualified now as a son of God or a daughter of God to go into the presence of God at any time. You're qualified not only to do that, but you're qualified to do the works of Christ. 
you're not you're not only qualified to do that, but you're qualified to function uh, in earth as a as a God individual. See, Jesus was the sample son. We get to see how he did things on the earth so we can duplicate that because as he is, so are we right now in this world. But to do that and to have confidence enough to walk as he walked in the earth, you're going to have to have a good self image as a man. Remember how we started this podcast as a man thinks in his heart. So is he. So we want our mind to be renewed with the word of God. We want our imagination our, our imagination to be illuminated by, by the Spirit of God and by the light of God to the point where we think like He thinks. And here's the thing is, you, you, now that you're recreated in His image and His likeness and you're found in Christ, you already possess something. You know what that is? That's the mind of Christ. That's the mind of Christ. And the Holy Spirit, He's your helper. And He searches out those riches that are in Christ that are in you right now and illuminates that to your mind. He'll help you get a true image of who you already are in Christ. And that's why you need to take the word of God and let the Holy Spirit through that relationship with the word of God and your prayer time, let him, let him take the paintbrush and, and paint on the canvas of your heart, the true image of who you are. Don't let somebody else tell you who you are. Don't let a doctor tell you who you are. Don't let a financial guru tell you what you can and cannot do and who you are. Don't let your education tell you who you are. Go to the scriptures. Go to the word. Go to the bread of life and partake of that. And let the Holy Spirit paint an image in your imagination and flood your your heart with light and revelation so that this identity can be so formed in you that your faith becomes unshakable. Glory to God, to the point where you're unmovable. Say amen to that. Praise God, because that's how it can be in your life. There, you know, we're living in a we're living in some strange times right now. People are confused all over. And we know uh, Satan is the author of confusion. Satan is, God's not the author of confusion. There's a lot of people in the church today. There's a lot of people that are born again and they're confused about things. They've, they've allowed uh, certain uh, messaging systems, <laughs> the culture of this world, and they're listening to wrong voices and they're allowing that to get in and, and mar and muddy their image of who, how they see themselves, who they think they are. Let me tell you, the word of God's absolute truth. You don't have to hear other voices. That and that alone, the word and that alone can form such a uh, foundation in your heart to where you won't be shaken. There's a lot of people that are being shaken off the truth. There's an attack on truth. There's an attack on people's image. And uh, the devil, if he can, he get you dumbed down. The Bible says, my people are destroyed for their lack of knowledge. That's why I said one of his biggest weapons is the weapon of stupidity. And, and there, unfortunately, there's a lot of stupidity that we see around us. People are believing in things and uh, see things different than they've ever seen it before. Standards are changing. Uh, ideas of right ways of living righteousness uh you know people's ideas of that ha have changed people just do whatever they want to do and live however they want to live and they don't think there's laws of sowing and reaping and there are but people are just so dumbed down that's why we've got to really adhere to truth and let that form an image on the inside of us because god's doing a work and he's doing it through his church and uh, we don't want to be watered down without power. We want to flow in power. We, in these last days, God needs a church that moves and flows in power. And to do that, we better know who we are. We better not be shaken off our faith. We can't waver. We can't have uh, one foot on one side of the fence and another foot on the other. We can't straddle with our belief. We've got to be strong in absolute truth. And so these truths are... Uh, 
they're wrapped up in the promises of God. The word of God is like a seed, and that seed contains the promise and, and the power of God. And when you get that truth on the inside of you, and it becomes alive on the inside of you, uh, it can be to the point where you don't have to see it on the outside to know that it's complete. You don't have to see healing on the outside to know that you're healed already. Because once you see it, nobody can ever talk you out of it. You can't be shaken. You see what I'm talking about? You know, these, these are strange times. These are troubled times that we live in. But in the midst of troubled times, uh, we can still be steadfast, unmovable. Say amen to that. Unshakable, always abounding in the work of God. But to do that, we've got to be really strong in our identity. There's an attack on the identity, but you can be strong in your identity in Christ. Remember, uh, and I've taken a lot of time already in this podcast, but I really want you to be established in this. Remember that if you're in Christ and you're born again, you're a new creature right now. You're found in him. You're a new creature. Old things are passed away. All things have become new. Old things are passed away is key. Don't let, the, don't let the enemy remind you of who you used to be and think that that's still who you are. Don't let the, the, the devil remind you of past performances or, or past failures. Because if, if you listen to that long enough, you'll take hold of a victim mentality Start feeling so sorry for yourself. Have low self-esteem. And people that have a low self-esteem, uh, they don't. Uh, they they treat other people different. You know, they'll they'll step on other people to make themselves feel more important. But people that have a, an an estimation of themselves that lines up with how God values you and your self-image is. Uh, it comes from the word of God and it comes from a knowing of how he thinks about you. You treat other people the same way you'd want to be treated. And so our horizontal relationships in life can be really affected by a bad self-image. And so it's important that you see yourself the way God sees you and don't let the devil form any kind of self-image that don't line up with the word of God in your spirit or in your heart. Remember the way we started this. As a man thinks in his heart, so is he. So if I want my, my mind to be influenced, I've got to take the word of God and with the washing of the water of the word of God. So the Bible calls the word water. So we take the washing of the water of the word of God and we begin to get our mind renewed and transformed. We do that through meditating. We do that through a confession unto faith. We do that through, you know, being obedient to what we see in the word. Uh, all of those things are important to getting your mind renewed. You don't do that just through a casual attendance to the word of God. Notice what the Bible says in Proverbs. He said, my son, attend unto my words. You know, if someone says, hey, could you come to, a, to an event with me tonight? And you, you weren't able to come because you were going somewhere else. You would say, no, I have to attend to such and such. When, you, when you're attended to the word of God, when you attend to the word of God, you're not distracted. You're not going to take a side journey you're not going to overbook yourself. You're going to isolate you and the word only in that attendance. In other words, I've got an appointment with the word of God day and night. I'm attending to the word of God so that the word can get into my heart. And also my mind can be renewed with it and not conformed to this world. See, if you don't do that, your mind will be vacant and empty. And when there's a vacancy, you'll be conformed to this world's ways by default. So you really want to, to, to really be diligent, not just at church attendance, but be diligent at listening, hearing, attending to the word of God, 
through study. It's, sometimes it's just one scripture in a month that you're just meditating on and really getting that picture on the inside of you and renewing your mind to it. You've really got to invest into that so that the aggression of this world system out there doesn't succeed at getting you conformed to a certain way of thinking. Because remember, the way you think will determine the way you believe. The way you believe will determine the way you talk. And the way you talk will determine what you have in life. What you have right now is a result of what you said maybe yesterday or the day before. What you say, are those are seeds that you put into the ground. And when those seeds go into the ground, they're going to come up. And so we want a harvest in life that, that uh, looks like the promises of the Word of God. Those promises need to get in us first so that our confession of faith becomes effective. Amen. Remember this, and I'll, I'll, I'll close with this. The Bible says in, in, in Philemon, it says that the communication of your faith, that, that's, that's really the confession of faith, that the communication of your faith would be effective by the acknowledging of every good thing that is in you in Christ Jesus. Acknowledging is you having a vivid image and saying yes to it. Yeah, you seeing it and you coming into agreement with it and acknowledging that it is finished. It's done. For example, I am already healed. I see it. I know it. It's in me. I say what I see in me first. See, it's one thing to say what you see on the outside, but it's another thing to say what you see on the inside. And that's when the communication of your faith is affected. Hey, I'm going to stop right there. God bless you. We're going to continue on this again another time on another podcast, but I hope you enjoyed this today. Um, God bless you. Let us know who you are. Write us on the screen right there. Again, there's information about all of our special meetings. You can be a part of them. Uh, if you don't have a home church, if you don't already have a home church, join us every Sunday and every Wednesday. We're going to be at Faith World Church in Menifee. Information's on the screen. We want you to be a part of what God's doing. We want you to be a part of our family. If you don't have a church family, come join ours. I promise you, your life will never be the same again in Jesus' name. God bless you. I love you.